Good day, support series stars. I'm on silence, and we're on the air with more Toka 2 touring cars. More bonus Toka 2. Thanks for tuning in. Of course, it has to be bonus because last time up we won the championship of the 1998 British Touring Car Championship. We have previously beaten, well, okay, we didn't win, but we did pretty good in the Ford Fiesta Championship. But uh, if we want to keep unlocking cars, we need more points. So you've got, uh, I think that was what, the Lister Storm that was next in the AC Superblower and then the Tricycle. And that was the Tuscan and that was the Jag. You'll say it like drag. So, we've done Ford Fiestas, now we gotta do Formula Fords. Open wheelers. I don't know if they're the Formula Ford 1600 or the Formula Ford 2000s, depending on the size of the engine. In cubic centimeters, of course, of course. No wings, just mechanical grip and a wing and a, actually no wings. Mechanical grip and a prayer. You can't even say it's on a wing and a prayer. There's no wings. Let's take a look at the Van Diemen Formula Ford. That's your car. We've got three colors to choose from. I did take one for a test spin on one of the bonus tracks. Didn't go well. <laughs> this is a loose bastard. So, you've got your blue and yellow, which, you know, that looks nice. Sunoco colors. You've got... I, this is what I'm leaning towards, the purple and the teal. You've got the shit brown and the yellow. And then you've got the green and the purple, which is just such a weird combination. It's just, it's upsetting to the eyes. So I'm going to go with the, uh, I'm going to go with the, uh, the, uh, purple and the teal. Maybe it's more of a light green, who knows. No Tiff, so it's just a Silverstone International, which we have been on before. Uh, that one is the, uh, that is the, uh, one, same one we did the BTCC in. So, we can go three laps at that, but first, we must qualify. Oh, we get the number one. Ain't that snazzy. Must be the Formula 4 2000, because the engine's sticking out the side there. Got the onboard, apparently, we can use that. Hold on to that barely. Oh, you got the nose cam. You've got the rear view. Hold on to that through fourth. It's so weird looking at it through the rear view. Maybe we'll go back to cockpit view. And this is the Abbey here. I think this. There you go. It's hard to see what your uh, speed is because, of course, it's covered by your right hand there. It's also hard to see what your what your tack is because it's covered by, well, both hands in the steering wheel. So you barely see what gear you're in. And there's the left through, but that one's woodcut and this one's left field. Right, there we go. Back down, charging towards the line. Can't cut that one. Let's be very careful there. So a little skiddy, but we'll see how we do. And on pole. Not too bad. It is a very, well, as a support race. So it's a very spaced out gap because down to fifth, it's almost 10 seconds. 9.02 down to fifth. And then you've got that second page. Or that guy's almost 17 seconds off the... Off the pace, Mr. Jackson. But of course, we'll all be clumped together come race time. All right, so it's just a cloudy day at Silverstone for the Formula Ford race. Let's have a go. No tiff, nor will there be a Jeff. So it's just... You can see a little smoke there. I grabbed a... Uh, I... Feathered the throttle ever so slightly. So that maybe could, uh... Is that camera going into here, really? I didn't realize... 
Sorry, I just realized, hey, that feels off camera going into cops. It's like, oh, maybe I should back out a bit because I'm scared now. Ooh, that was a little close heading into the, uh, whatever the unnamed right-hander back to the international circuit is. But we will. There we go, take it down to third. Just use up all the track, try and keep your momentum up. This may not be the most exciting support car championship you ever seen, but... But who knows when we're going to run into a track that I haven't been to before. Or where I do something like that and just overcook it. Because there's no pressure, so why do I have to concentrate? Still nobody in the mirrors, though. See, when you've got the in-car view like this, you can really see a lot more of the undulations in the circuit as opposed to, like, the, the roof cam on the, on the touring car. This one, you're right in the cockpit. Although we have to talk about the clash... Of, uh... Yeah, that's really off camber there in Cops. Because we've got sort of a white and red suit with blue pants. And there's a purple car with a... With a tealy... With a tealy sort of, uh, accent on it. And it's just like, does that... Ooh. Got a little skitty there. Again. Nah, yeah, it's just a, it's just such a bad mismatch. In terms of uh, all your uh, all your accoutrement, Whoop. had to back that down to two. But I also think that's where we make up most of our time on people, because we're so daring in there. Back that down to fourth. And this one will take down to third. Attack that curb. I mean, I'd be a little more precise with my with my inputs here, but uh, I'm also using the Jacques Villeneuve uh, Xbox controller. That is an actual thing. You can look that up. He's been kicking. Uh, he's, uh, he has it as of recording one, one of those The Race Legends races. But he's also, like, finishing up the order using an Xbox controller while everyone else is on wheels or rigs. So he's just like, yep. I'm going to keep using my Xbox controller. But, I mean, that was something that... Because they couldn't test everywhere, and, like, simulator technology is nowhere near where it is now, what Jacques used to do back in the day, and people made fun of him back in the day, too, don't forget, was he used to use the PlayStation games to learn the new circuits. Because he hadn't been to, like, almost any of those circuits. And certainly not in the Formula One car, so we had to use whatever was at his disposal in order to learn, you know, what was what, where was where, give him a vague idea about breaking points and shifting points and apexes and all that before he got to a circuit. So now it's just expected that you're going to spend time in a simulator learning the track. Back then, they didn't really have the same sort of sims. So now it's like, yeah, people are, and now like you've got people in NASCAR and whatnot, like not just as an esport, but people learning tracks and stuff. Like William Byron in iRacing before he showed up in NASCAR. Talladega BR with Dale Jr. and Martin Truex, you know, stuff like that. And here's the race results. 10 points and, not to mention, a nice, uh, nice new unlocked support car championship. So that'll be 10 points. It's 10, 9, 8, and 1 point down until you reach 10th place. Who still manages to score a point? Not sure if this is NASCAR's wet dream or Bernie Ecclestone's. So Thruxton, we've been here before. Sunny, sunny Thruxton. It's actually sunny this time. We'll just change the gear ratios there. No, no, obviously. No downforce to settings to change. We're just going to get this car wound up. The idea is just don't make a mistake. Again, I mean, that is, that is, that is the key 
First, the key to winning the NASCAR Winston Cup Championship is consistency. There we go, grab fourth there. And then almost spin landing off that curb. May you avoid all the curbs. Just try and keep it in the middle of the road. That way gives us a chance. Okay, maybe clipping the grass is fine. This looks like a 1-4 something. I can't quite tell. 140, 141. 140, 141. If we stay out front, we'll be fine. If we get in behind, well, it'll be interesting, won't it? Just a little skiddy through the chicane. So we'll aim it back towards the inside for the line. So 112 here in the Formula 4. Let's see how it stacks us up. I'd say a healthy 7 second margin will do us quite well. Of course, again, we aren't going to win this race by, by 21 seconds. So no matter how good I do. And 17 back to Pappas in the last... He's not living up to the last name. All right, three laps, Sunny Thruxton. I think we can pull this one off. Am I the only one? No, there was another teal car. I think I see two, two cars with my paint scheme. Not a good start this time. I got, I found the bite point. I, I found the acceleration point. I found all that good stuff the first time out. A little less luck on the start. I was a little more anxious this time. And now we're holding up the field ever so slightly. Ooh. Didn't even have to hit the curb for it to kind of slip out from underneath me there. Of course, the start line is the great equalizer. Why do you think that F1 wants to keep doing starts? Here's a safety car, let's restart the race. Here's a red flag, let's restart from the red lights, you know? How do you think F1 wants to do it? Because there's a more, because you bunch the field up, they don't get strung out, so there's more opportunities for overtaking. With more opportunities for overtaking, can come opportunities for reshuffling the field after that as people try and catch up. So it's little things like that. Why do you think it, so that's why, you know? And I'm very much opposed to, like, more starts. Just because it is, like, a, it is a random element, but I also don't like DRS. Because I find it's more of a random element than it is real driver skill. Mind if they made the cars easier to follow. Uh, make things better. So you just look over at any car when they're, uh, you know, racing. Like the amount of passes in an IndyCar race relative to an F1 race. Because the cars are designed, yeah, they go fast, and driver skill is a very important component. But also, they try to minimize the impact of, of you know, the, uh, of the disadvantage of being in a trailing car. Because all the cars are, you know, most of the downforce comes from the underbody of the car means a less turbulent aerodynamic weight. Good for drafting, bad for you know, bad for anybody that's trying to use the wake of your car to try and throw off anyone following you. And that's the nice thing about a spec series as well is that you don't have to worry about like because that, that's something that a series can can keep in mind. Is designed the cards to make them easier to follow. So it isn't just a qualifying is everything. You can actually drive and race the damn things. That's one of the problems with, you know, even if a Formula One is supposed to be in 2022 going to a more, you know, passing, following, friendly 
um, type of uh, formula, aero formula, the cars are still going to be designed in such a way that it's like, because in F1, every one car is going to be designed to go as fast as possible, you know, wait for the car behind, or cars behind, be damned, so I can't see, I can't see, you know, passing being that much easier in this new aero formula unless they basically get rid of all of the overbody downforce and winglets and stuff and just like hear everything underbody ground effect. And across the line. Ah, we're good with the replay. I told you, we were going to pull seven seconds on them every time, but if one little slip up, that would have let uh, Alfonso and Ferrario by us. I think they were flip flopped in the order the last time out, so we'll have to see how that went in the uh, when we get to the uh, standings. And then onto the second page. Jackson Evans Pappas. Okay, if Pappas recovered from, from his poor qualifying, but everyone's sort of in a pack there. I guess pack racing helps on the fastest circuit in Britain. And here's the con or the driver's standing. No constructor standings. This is a one make series, yeah. So okay, no, uh I guess Alfonso was not uh third in the last race. Maybe that was uh Riv Rivali there. So we've got a three point gap, not too bad after two races. It's four races in a championship, of course. Maximum 40 points. And the low sky's on five, so it's not like somebody's all the way down there with two points, so that's good. Snitterton, we've been here before. It's really got to be about this. Yeah, it's about the same setup, too. And we don't have to go back and look at that. Just, just go fast. And now we know the breaking points and how to do this. Having uh, done it in the... <laughs> I was like, having done it in the Audi, but I think everyone here would, you know, if you if you saw the race at Stetterton a couple of weeks ago, you would say, ah, uh, do you actually know how to get around there? I actually held that pretty flat. Doesn't matter whether I'm in the Audi or if I'm in the Formula Ford, I'm still just like skidding through there. But like I said, now here, here's where I would have expected trouble. So I, I feel like, now that I know this... You can... Probably could have gone a little faster through there, too. But that's just it, is... A little camber in that, that, uh... Right there, we know to avoid the curb over here, because that'll chew you up and spit you out. We also know the breaking point here, just before 50. That's a little skiddy through there. And you can also just cut through here, save yourself a couple hundredths. That actually faster than the touring car? I don't know. It's got to be close to faster than the touring car on single lap pace. It feels like it anyway. Lighter car. Probably. Something like that. Even if the top speed isn't as high. I think the time and the twisty bits kind of makes up for it. And all the way down... Actually, this might be the closest that the field has been bunched together on qualifying is 15 seconds, which is kind of sad, but it's... Like I said, it's a support series, development series. All right, three laps at Snetterton. Let's go. Like, I'm waiting for rain or something weird to happen, right? Because that's happened in, like, every other... That happened in the Fiesta Championship where we got that monsoon. Well, that was just an awful start. Falling all the way down to last. That's not good. The thing is, we know we're fast. We're just going to get aggressive and cut our way through here. Of course, here's where we've run into a problem. Because every, no matter what, everybody's going to top out at a run. Just going to get, oh my goodness, this isn't good. Alright, there we go, we survived that. There's Rivali there, 
All our championship rivals are in front. Not good. I think Rivali there might have gotten us and tried to turn us a little bit. Because we were busy trying not to spin off any... Or spin off, yeah, spin offs, punt out anyone in front of us. Wait for him to break, and then do the same. That is classic last of the late breakers, overtakers. Now Alfonso is in front of us. Podium would be nice, it wouldn't be ideal. We'd still hold on to the lead if we pick up by eight points, but I think... That was a bad idea. Well, we managed to scare off everyone behind us. I got a little punt there. It kind of just threw me sideways, so... Not good. I should not have made that attempt. That was a bit of a dive bomb. Alright, well, let's just try and... Find every tenth we can, every hundredth we can... As we come onto the final lap. Well, we're going to be tied. It's going to be a winner-take-all final race, which is not where I want to be. It's amazing how much pressure you can put yourself under with one mistake and then compound it with another mistake. I don't think I can make up one second here. Or one in 1.9 seconds. I'd probably make up one. The extra 0.9 might be the difficult part. Because he's already at the turn-in. He's at the bridge. There he's turning in. Grab third gear up into fourth. Avoid the curbing. See, we made up the one. And an extra 200 on top of that. And here's the thing. Can I make that dive bomb? I was going to say, did I get my hand up and out the, out the window with that guy? <laughs> kind of deserved it. I had the pass taken and he just kind of cut under me and then pump me out of the way. Not a lot of respect amongst Formula 4 drivers. So Ferrario wins. They'll take 10 points. And then Alfonso, Rivali, me, Bailey. And then onwards and downwards we go. So what are championship standings? So yeah, like I said, it's going to be level, but we got it on count back against Ferrario there at the moment. But you can't count back in the final race, so... It'll be interesting to see what happens. We just have to not cock up. It's gonna be Croft or some circuit I'm bad at next, isn't it? Olton Park Foster's Circuit! Okay, well... Not bad there. Just a matter of not making any mistakes. Just barely hold it together in turn one. So you head down to the Cascades, to the Foster's Curve. There we go. And through Knickerbrook. For some reason I thought that was going to get a lot worse through Knickerbrook, but it wasn't. So we now we're on up the hill to Druids. Did get a little skiddy. I turned in on full throttle, thinking I'd be able to hold it, but apparently I'm going to need to back her down. This is what Lodge. Down to fourth. Make the left back towards the line, and here we go. 53. It seemed like a respectable lap put together, so. Yeah, I'd say that's a respectable lap put together. Also, point uh, to make is Alfonso ahead of Ferrario, which would give us a one position, uh, one little position, little buffer there that we can work with there. We had, uh, wow, that was a dead heat for a second. Both at uh, not point three, or point not three, I should say. Uh, yeah, when you've got like single car qualifying like this, like I wonder how they would do it. 
<laughs> That's the game to do the tiebreaker. Doesn't matter, Steve, just go with it. You got the advantage, just go with it. It's not like NASCAR where it's like identical times goes to owner's points. Uh, then there's uh, F1 that does who set the time first. I'm not sure I can remember the last time IndyCar had to deal with that. Because IndyCar goes down to, I think, the 10,000th with their timing. It's a hell of a lot harder to get, like, identical times there. All right, one final race in the Van Diemen Formula Ford Championship around Woolton Park Foster Circuit. All right. You got that start hooked up really well. I only managed to hold up the inside line at the very least. That's the start. Now, is that Ferrari behind me? Is that actually might be advantageous? Yeah, it is. I'm busy trying not to die here. And Ferrari is busy trying to kill... Uh, the hand, that hand came out of the cockpit that time. I definitely saw that. Okay, there we go. Now here, now that's good for a start. We've held him back, but the problem is we're definitely not in the transfers. We're not in a championship winning spot there. What the hell happened there? Come up the hill, hit a bump and almost go sideways? So we still gotta make up a few spots here. What on earth is going on? The car's just gone demonic there. Apparently not just me. Okay, so at least we were going to unlock the next championship. He is just going to hold us up a treat. And we're going to outbreak. What the hell was that? He actually tried to kill me there. What on earth was that? Like, there's hard racing, and then there's, like, actually trying to murder someone. Bad enough the car got out of shape going up a hill. Actually have somebody turn sideswipe you in a bloody open wheeler. That's just diabolically evil. Come on, Cody's. I didn't think you programmed your AI to try and murder people. But apparently. But apparently we're gonna have to for the thumbnail, we're just gonna have to find a picture of a Formula Ford crash. Something that was bullshit was that I'm Not saying we would have won the championship, but we would have at least been in with a sh better shot As Alfonso would have had ten I probably could have gotten up to fourth or third So there we are sitting on that and Plus seven points would have tied me with Alfonso and I would have won on comeback, count back. So I would have had to finish third. Which, I mean, who knows? I could have done. But, obviously, homicide was attempted there. Indeed, the support championship is over. Not a moment too soon. At least I escaped with my life. Which was questionable there for a couple minutes. But we have 57 points in total for all sport race championships. We can now do the Lister Storm. There it is unlocked there. And then we just need three points the next time in order to unlock the uh, AC Super Blower. So yeah, we can come back next time with uh, the Lister Storm and see how that thing drives.
Uh, how many more of these? We got one, two, three, four, five more support championships before I gotta figure out what the next uh, racing game LP is. Give us a month of content, we'll be fine. <laughs> Alright. But that'll do it for this time on Toka 2 Touring Cars. Until we see you again, I'm on silent. Thanks very much for joining me. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you're new. Share on social media. Follow on social media. The social media handle is on silent on air. And that is for Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr. Don't forget you can check out more Toka 2 Touring Cars in the playlist. It's on the screen in the description down below. More videos in time on the channel page. And until the next time, I'm on silent. Thanks very much for joining me. Like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.